Hey there, everyone. I am here with filmmakers Betsy West and Julie Cohen, and they are the filmmakers of Julia, a new film all about Julia Childs that is going to be released November 12th. Um, tell me a little bit about this film. I know there's a lot of recreation footage of cooking in it. What was the most delicious thing that you got to eat while filming? Whoa. Wow. Um, the pear tart? Yeah, I think maybe the pear tart is really good. Mm -hmm. The salad vissoise was delicious. Yeah. I mean, we'll say that the cooking actually, you know, to have a food scene work out right, the food stylist, Susan Spungen, had to cook lots of different versions of it at different stages. So at the end, the crew, you know, ever we got to bring stuff home and it was really good. I particularly enjoyed not even the fully assembled pear tart, but just like poached that like pears in a big like Ziploc bag full of wine. <laughs> delicious. The catering in future movies will never look the same. <laughs> no, exactly. <Yeah. laughs> um, I'm curious to know what inspired you to make this film today. You know, Julia Child is was kind of irresistible for us, frankly. Um, a woman who changed our world, changed the way Americans eat, the way Americans think about food, and also changed the kind of women who could be on television, you know, really broke barriers on television, and also opened up uh, the culinary world for women. I mean, she really was a revolutionary figure, and also someone who had so much joie de vivre, so much personality. Uh, we thought it would be really fun to explore what made Julia, Julia. I'm curious to know, what was the biggest challenge with making this type of film? Yeah, the biggest challenge in making a documentary about a human being who died uh, some, some time before, you know, for a good 15 years before we started making the film, is always going to be a bit of a challenge. Um, we were helped by a number of things. First of all, there's the incredible archive of Julia Child's work on television, the actual episodes of The French Chef and the later uh, programs that she did, but also ultimately some great behind the scenes footage that we found and the spectacular still photography. Um, our editor, Carla Gutierrez, said she had never been so happy with the array of images that she had to work with than she was uh, with this film, many of those images taken by Julia's husband, Paul, who was a fabulous photographer and took these photos that are both, you know, like compositionally, they're great and all, but they're just so like intimate and loving and let, let you really feel what he felt looking at Julia. Definitely. Yeah, it was beautiful. Um, if you could go back in a time machine and ask <laughs> Julia one question, what would it be? Julia was such an optimistic person, and yet she faced some challenges in, in, in these breakthroughs that she made. She and her partner spent 12 years writing, mastering the art of French cooking, which is now accepted as like the definitive Bible of French food, and yet they had very little support for doing that. And, and actually, after they finished, the, it was rejected. The book was rejected. Another publisher smartly picked it up but that must have been so discouraging um so i guess i would have asked julia how did she kind of push through how did she have the um the determination the, the confidence to keep working on this project when you know everybody was kind of saying well who knows if this is really going to work out Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think we might, it might be nice to hear her just express, you know what, I was so dang <laughs> mad. When, when we read that with the letter that the publisher writes back to her saying like, oh, you know, no one's going to want to read this. Women are going to be frightened by <laughs> seeing all these complicated recipes. And like, I, yeah. I'd love to hear what it felt like to get that letter and what she might have wanted to say back to yeah. the writer. Yeah. It seems like Julia's cooking style was inspired by food all around the world. I'm curious to know what continues to inspire both of you as, as filmmakers. As filmmakers, you know, we like telling good stories, you know, and, and we, we choose to work in documentaries. We love documentaries. We watch them all the time. And we're always thinking about what 
the next documentary? What could we do? I think, you know, it's a time where people are interested in the truth, <laughs> getting mm -hmm. at the truth, and whether or not, you know, depending on whatever the subject is, I think that's what really drives us. In the case of Julia, it's like, what made this woman who really wasn't a success until middle age? What were the steps that led to um, Julia becoming such an icon? You know, so much so that, you know, she was, she was made fun of on Saturday Night Live. You know, and even today, people know who Julia Child is. Uh, we wanted to get at the heart of how, how did that happen? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, what advice do you have for young filmmakers just starting out in the documentarian field? Yeah, that's <laughs> always that's always a hard question. I mean, you know, definitely uh, persistence is key, but also I think a willingness to consider different slices of the process of, of, of making a film. I mean, you know, people have thoughts of being the directors of films, that's great. But, you know, cinematography is an amazing field. So is being an editor. There's just all, so, so is doing archival research, which is, has been so key to some of the projects that, that we've done. So I think, you know, getting oneself on to a good project that you find inspiring no matter what your role is in that project and then just really digging in and learning everything you can is probably the best advice that a young uh documentary person could, could get yeah i mean i always think that it's good to work with people that you think you can learn from and to try to get yourself in that situation and also now with the technology that is available and fairly inexpensive to practice your craft. I mean, you may be working on a project where you're the PA or, you know, you have a lowlier position, but you can also be working on your own short film, uh, something that's close at hand. And, you know, just to give yourself some practice uh, making something on your own, something that Julie and I could never have done when we started our career right. because, you know, the technology, technology was, was so cumbersome and overwhelming that, you know, we couldn't have shot and edited something. And now people can do that. Yeah. Not to mention expensive, too, you know, print and film right. and everything. Exactly. No, I mean, you, right. we wouldn't, you couldn't even think of it. I'm curious to know, what is the next project on the horizon? <laughs> well, we're not quite telling you. We do okay. know we're finishing up uh, an edit on a film that we are extremely excited about. Again, it is about a phenomenal American woman who has accomplished so much. Uh, in this case, it's a, the, the character is still living. Um, it's very much a verite film, and it's somebody that we've been following for about the past year and a half, and we're so excited about it. Just Love this story. Well, now I'm super curious. I'm going to have to follow you both on Twitter and just, you know, yes. hit the notification yes. button and keep up to date on it. Um, I want to thank you both very much for the interview and taking the time out. The movie comes out November 12th. Thank you again. Thank, thank you, Kevin. Kevin. So much, Kevin. Have a great day.